Starts right now. I'm sorry for them. I mean, that's really, really sad. Can't believe this is happening. This morning on GMSA, a massive manhunt for a man accused of shooting and killing five people yesterday in a small community just north of Houston. Now, the FBI is getting involved. And we have two overnight fires. We're going to check in with Alyssa Cole. She is live breaking down what we know, the latest from San Antonio firefighters. And taking a look outside through live cam, it seems to be smooth sailing out on those San Antonio roadways. We're going to also be checking in with Sarah to see how the rest of the day is going to be playing out weather-wise. It may be hot. We'll see. Good morning. Thank you so much for starting your Sunday with us. It is 6 a.m. It is April 30th. It is the bro show. April 30th. Let's mark the occasion. This <laughs> doesn't happen all the time, so it's a rare occasion for sure. Max. Happy to be here. So I got to ask, did you make it out yesterday? Do any of the fiesta fun? I didn't. I didn't. I think after Friday, I oh, was yeah. a little exhausted, but I went to a comedy show, so it was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. A lot of laughs. A lot of fun out there. Oh, yeah. Sarah Spy, did you make it out to fiesta fun, I just got to say, first of all, mm -hmm. can I be a bro today? Yeah. <laughs> yeah you're definitely one of, yeah, one of the bros. Yeah, so. I'm a bro. I'm part of the bro <laughs> show. Uh, yeah, I was able to make Make it to Fiesta Flambeau last night for the KSAP parade party, and it was just awesome to see everyone. Now, I did leave because I had to get up at 2.30 this morning. That makes so sense. I left at like 7.15, and it felt amazing outside for the night parade. Absolutely beautiful. This morning, it's kind of chilly, and you may not know this, but by looking out at temperatures right now, we're going to be up to near 90 degrees later on today. Yeah, even though we're cool, it is going to be a hot day because of low humidity. It's 45 in Kerrville, 44 in Comfort, 50 here in San Antonio, 52 in New Braunfels, 49 in Hondo, and 53 at Stinson. But take a look at today's forecast. Last day of Fiesta, so I had to put on the confetti for the graphics. 72 degrees at 10. So in the span of a few hours here, we're going to see temperatures go up by some 20 degrees by 10 o'clock. By noon, it'll be 82 by some 30 degrees. And then by 4 or 5 p.m., that's when we'll see our high 90 for the high today. Starting the day at 50, topping off at 90. That is a 40 degree temperature swing. Southwest winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Don't forget the sunscreen. It's going to be sunny all day long. Now, I'll talk about the reason why we're able to warm up from 50 to 90 coming up in just a bit. And of course, I'll get you ready for the week ahead as we wind down from Fiesta. Jonathan, Max. Thank you, Sarah. Very busy night for San Antonio firefighters. Hard at work looking at two different fires throughout the Alamo City. That's right. Crews responded to two house fires on the east and the west side after midnight. Alyssa Cole joining us live from downtown. Alyssa, we know two people able to escape safely from one home. Yes, first responders were able to help a family get out of their home in just enough time on the east side area it was roughly the southeast side. But before we get into the details about that, let me tell you about this first house fire crews responded to overnight as well on the west side. Take a look at your screen right now. We're going to show you some video from that scene. Now, just before one o'clock, crews put out a fire at a vacant house on Coral Street near Guadalupe because the house was empty. Firefighters were able to get inside quickly, put out the flames before it widespread. Arson investigators were called out to the scene. We're waiting to hear back what their results were, but overall the crews were satisfied with their work in containing the house fire from damaging nearby homes. Now we're going to tell you video of that other house fire that I mentioned briefly when we first began, um, where if crews were able to help a family get out safely. Take a look at your screen right now. Here's the video. It was happening around the same time that first house fire happened, and this one was happening on the southeast side on Schley Avenue near Rixby. When crews arrived to the scene, they saw light smoke coming out of the house, went inside quickly, of course, and found that fire right there in the front area. Of course, they were able to move through the home swiftly to make sure there were no other hot spots inside, including the attic. And of course, two people living inside, they were able to make it out safely. But we do not have any word on how badly the home was damaged and if the people were able to go back to their home uh, early overnight. But for now, reporting downtown San Antonio, Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alyssa. In your morning headlines, a manhunt for the man investigators say shot and killed five people execution style inside a home north of Houston. One of the victims, an eight-year-old boy. ABC's Lionel Moyes has the latest. 
A horrific scene at a home in Cleveland, Texas, north of Houston, where police say five people were shot and killed, including an eight-year-old boy. Five other people in the home were not physically injured. Our number one priority uh, is like it's always been since the uh, early uh, morning hours of this morning, late, late last night, has been to uh, uh, locate this suspect and uh, put him behind bars where he belongs. The FBI and a number of other agencies joining the San Jacinto County Sheriff's Office in the search for the suspect, 39-year-old Francisco Oropesa. Investigators say they found Oropesa's cell phone Saturday, but he was gone. There was some articles of clothing laying around. Uh, the tracking dogs from Texas Department of Corrections uh, picked up the scent, and then they lost that scent in the water. Police believe it started after neighbors asked the suspect to stop shooting his gun in the front yard because their baby was trying to sleep. They called 911 to report a harassment. The father of the little boy that was killed told ABC station KTRK that the gunman first shot his wife in the doorway of their home, then went room to room. He says two of the other women killed protected the other children, including his infant son. The victims ranged in age from 8 to 31 years old. Neighbors say they heard the gunfire but could not imagine what happened. I feel sorry for them. I mean, that's really, really sad. Can't believe this is happening. Police believe the suspect was intoxicated at the time. The FBI says he's considered armed and a threat to the community. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. In other headlines, a big update to the banking turbulence across our country. Federal, federal regulators are racing to seize and sell First Republic Bank as soon as the end of this weekend to beat the opening bell Monday morning. The New York Times reports the effort as led uh, by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, which comes after First Republic shares tumbled 75 percent last week after the bank disclosed that customers had withdrawn more than half of its deposits. According to the Times, nobody was willing to ride to First Republic's rescue because larger banks were worried that buying that company would saddle them with billions of dollars in losses. Right now, the FDIC is talking with banks that include J.P. Morgan Chase, PNC Financial Services, and Bank of America about a potential deal. And looking ahead, SpaceX founder Elon Musk says its Starship rocket could attempt another test flight in six to eight weeks. Ten days ago, SpaceX attempted to launch a capsule into space on Starship, but the rocket blew up during its first test flight. The FAA is still investigating to figure out what happened, which could take weeks or months to complete. So I think there's a lot of aspects of that. First off, it did get off the ground, so that was a big win. Yes. Didn't make it all the way to Mars, obviously. But it does <laughs> seem like it's a step in the right direction. So I'm going to put you on the spot. Would you ever do a live shot on a, a live rocket, one that hopefully doesn't blow up? I have to think about that. Okay, right? Yeah. We'll think about this. We'll come back. That's a good question. Yeah. All right, folks. Time is 6.08. Temperature is 52 degrees. All right, we got a lot more to come on GMSA. The NFL Draft wrapping up after a three-day marathon. The Cowboys, lots of picks, but they're now making headlines after an emotional weekend for one of their scouts. And up next, you'll meet the candidate for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society's Visionary of the Year. How he says cancer changed his life for the good of others. Really great story by John Paul Barajas. Can't wait to hear about it. Taking a live look outside, 52 degrees now. How warm will it get? We're gonna check in with Sarah Spivey on this really the last day of Fiesta 2023. Good morning and welcome back. So according to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, about every nine minutes, someone in the United States, they die from a type of blood cancer. That statistic is one of the many reasons the LLS is advocating to raise awareness and funds. That's right, John Paul Barajas sitting down with one of the candidates for LLS's Visionary of the Year. If you ever hear those words, cancer, the first thing you're doing is you feel like you're grasping for straws. It's a moment Gregory Proctor is all too familiar with. Proctor says his fight for his life started with his 2021 diagnosis. Now cancer free, his fight continues, but for other patients. Giving back is really about utilizing my voice to elevate how important it is to bring forth awareness. And primarily, those pillars that we try to support is based on research, patient education, and advocacy. Proctor's one of the 12 candidates for the South Central Texas region for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society Visionary of the Year campaign. The goal, 
raise as much money as possible. Last year, the region raised $1.8 million, and San Antonio finished third among major cities for donations. They've invested, you know, roughly $29 million in saving lives and Texas institutes, and then to date, we funded more than $1.5 billion in advanced treatments. He explains when he was diagnosed, he relied heavily on the educational resources and programs offered and funded by LLS. The organization also invests in life-saving research to help those who are diagnosed in the future. It could be you. It could be your brother. It could be your sister. It could be your mother. You just never know. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Really amazing story. All right, so we are in the last day of Fiesta. Mm -hmm. Last night, Fiesta Flambeau. You made it out and about. Good on you. I mean, that's really like <laughs> double duty going on. I'm running on four hours of sleep and black coffee, and I feel great. That's all of us. That's yeah, it us. absolutely you know, I have to mention, while being out last night, I noticed that it was so cool and yeah. crisp, and I'm like, are we even in April? I know, right? Great. The low humidity makes it feel wonderful in the mornings and in the evenings. Now, during the afternoon today, it is going to be hot, but let's go ahead and take a look at, uh, at the weather setup for the day today. You'll notice it's a tale of two stories across the nation. While the west side of the nation is pretty quiet, it is a different story out to the east. Look at all of this rainfall across parts of the Appalachian Mountains and even some snow for parts of Wisconsin. Florida today this morning is dealing with some severe weather, a tornado watch for parts of Florida this morning. Two low pressure systems creating some storminess across the east coast. Meanwhile, here in San Antonio and across the central plains, we've got a high pressure system in place. High means dry, a ridge of high is going to pressure is going to move overhead today. And so we're going to stay dry not only today, but also for the majority of this upcoming week. As we take a look outside right now, it's 50 cool degrees outside. Winds are from the northwest at about five miles per hour. Elsewhere, we're seeing temperatures in the mid 40s. Kerrville, 45 degrees this morning. Good morning in Yavaldi, where it's 49. 54 in Catula, 51 in Pleasanton, 52 in New Braunfels, and 52 in Gonzales. Don't let this cool morning fool you because even though temperatures are cool right now, we have got very dry air in place. Now, dry air works like this. It cools down easily and it warms up easily. So with dew points in the 30s and 40s, think about the desert. It's cool in the morning and it's hot in the afternoon. That's going to be the case today for us. So let me take you through this KSAT 12 hour forecast. Reminder again, we are at 52 degrees right now. By 9, we're going to be at 67. By 10, 72. And by noon, in the low 80s. By noon, the afternoon temperatures are going to generally be in the 80s. And then by 4, 5 p.m., that's when we'll be looking at a high of 90 degrees. Nothing but sunshine. Hey, at least it's going to be a dry heat, right? No major humidity to deal with this afternoon. Again, think about a desert. Take a look out to the west, 95 in Del Rio, 94 for the high in Eagle Pass. So even hotter out west. It is out west where it's going to be hotter and drier that there is a little bit of an elevated fire risk. Now winds are not going to be as high as they were yesterday, but it's still something to consider if you're going to be out and about. Try to use extra caution for any kind of outdoor burning. Otherwise, it'll be 89 in Kerrville, 87 in Canyon Lake, 90 in Hondo, 84 in Gonzales, around San Antonio, 90 Port SA, 90 Stinson, 89 in Divine, 89 in Poteet, 90 in Hondo, 88 in Nixon Smiley, 88 in Seguin and New Braunfels. Now, low humidity today, as I mentioned, humidity will be pleasantly low tomorrow too, but by Tuesday, it'll be humid again and then very humid by the upcoming weekend. Take a look at the forecast for you. We're not really going to be seeing any chance for rain until about Thursday and Friday. Thursday, Friday night, uh, it does look like we will see some storms on Thursday night, especially. And by the way, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about our rain chance coming up in the next half hour. This month, today's the last day of April. It has been a good month for rain for us. So stick around for that. That's right. Thank you. You know, I feel like we always learn something with you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I uh, thanks. <laughs> Teacher Sarah. Yeah, doing doing my best not to say tomorrow is going to be May, but in a Justin Timberlake accent. All right, time now. <laughs> six Stop seven. Already done that. Fifty-two degrees. <laughs> Instead of coming before 6.30, a new bill on Capitol Hill is aiming to keep kids off of social media. How it works and why some experts say it's not enough. Go 
Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The NFL Draft and the weekend really officially wrapping up. So we saw the Texans pretty much revitalize their team. But part of the excitement of the draft weekend, seeing all the college players get a chance to follow their dreams, usually they have their families right by their side. Up in Dallas, the Cowboys actually brought a family together, specifically a father and son. Dallas taking dynamic Kansas State running back Deuce Vaughn in the sixth round. And pick means a lot. Vaughn, also the son of Cowboys Scott Chris Vaughn, Scout Chris Vaughn. Now, he's been in Dallas since 2017. Saturday, he got to call his own son, break the news that he was drafted by the Cowboys. And on the conference call, Deuce said he didn't want any favors handed to him just because his dad works in the league. I wanted it to happen organically. Um, I want everything to kind of fall into place as if it would. And, I mean, over the past two weeks, I mean, the, the biggest thing that we kind of echo to each other is that I just needed a chance. And for it to be Dallas, oh, man, it's unbelievable. So there's so much to this. First off, remember, Zeke, technically not a Cowboy anymore. So Deuce actually could play. But then just seeing the emotions of his dad, like getting yeah. to talk to his son, Congratulations. First job out of college. Think about it yeah. that way. And also, I mean, this is a lifelong dream for so many people. Definitely. Congratulations. Thank you, Max. Well, time is 622. Temperature is 52 degrees. And just ahead, social media is being blamed for a mental health crisis across the U.S., what lawmakers are doing about it, and why some experts believe it's not enough. This morning, lawmakers on Capitol Hill are looking to keep young kids off of social media. They're hoping to address a mental health crisis that experts say is fueled by being on, so, socially online. The legislation would establish 13 as the national minimum age for social media use while creating strict standards for verifying a user's age. However, tech accountability advocates believe the bill is focused on the wrong issue. Nicole Jill with the nonprofit Accountable Tech argues laws should incentivize tech companies to redesign their platforms to protect mental health and privacy. This bill doesn't actually put any responsibility onto the tech companies. Instead, it's putting more responsibility onto parents and young people to kind of self-police. Social media companies have a duty to help keep kids safe and parents informed or face serious consequences. The proposed bill would require parental consent for users aged 13 to 17. It would also ban tech platforms from using teens' personal information to target them with content or advertising. I mean, I'm going to throw it back a few years. I remember when Facebook first came out. I'm not trying to date myself here, but you <laughs> couldn't even not be in high school and join it. I remember right. that was like a big thing. So I, I feel like age limits, especially after we see all the, the mental and social impact that we yeah. stemming from social media. So true. The, the, the research there is there. Experts are advising this is the smart decision to make. You know. yeah. all right. Let's see. We'll see how that plays out. Folks, time is 627. Temperature is 52 degrees. And still ahead at 6.30, law enforcement in Atascosa County have captured a suspect after a manhunt on Saturday morning. How he got away from them the first time. Plus, Fiesta Flambeau, a massive success. Thousands and thousands of people. We're going to give you the sights and sounds from across downtown. That's coming up. Good morning. Welcome back. Happy Sunday, 6.30 this morning. It is April 30th. So, Jonathan Cotto, last day of Fiesta. What has been your favorite part so far? You know, I have to say I really enjoyed uh, Battle of Flowers. You crushed it out there oh, live thanks. with Mark and I, Steph I had, all morning. You no, know, it was it was so easy because it was so much fun. The crowd truly made it just a great time. A great, great time. You know, we had great weather for both Battle of Flowers and the Night Parade. Now, Battle of Flowers was a little warm toward the end of it, but, but last night for Flambeau, I mean, it was gorgeous out there. I, I went out there a little bit before it got too late past my bedtime, and you know what? Temperatures were nice and comfortable, all because of low humidity. In fact, this morning, do not let the cool morning fool you. It is chilly. You might even need a light sweater early this morning. Temperatures in the 40s, 43 in Kerrville, 49 in Hondo, 48 in Givaldi. Good morning in Del Rio. It's 55, 50 here in San Antonio, 52 in New Braunfels. As we zoom in around San Antonio, you can actually see how in the valleys it's a little bit cooler. So as I mentioned, Kerrville at 43, Bandera 45, Comfort 46, 46 in Bernie, 45 in in Bulverde. Here's the thing though, 
Again, do not let this cool morning fool you because we are going to go through a big temperature swing today. It's 50 degrees this morning. I am forecasting 90 for the high this afternoon in San Antonio. That is a 40 degree temperature swing all because of dry air in place. Coming up, I'll tell you when that humidity is going to return. We'll also take a look at how great April has been for us. Our first decent month for rain in quite some time. Details on when we'll see more rain in the forecast coming up soon. Jonathan Max. Thank you, Sarah. Happening overnight, San Antonio firefighters responding to two separate house fires on the southeast and west side just after midnight. Alyssa Cole joins us live from downtown. Alyssa, we know two people were able to escape from one of those homes safely. What have you learned? Good. Good morning, Jonathan, Max. That's exactly right. A family was able to escape a home safely on the southeast side. But before we get into the, the details of that, let me tell you about the first house fire that happened on the on the west side. So take a look right now at your screen. This is the video from one of the fires on the city's west side. Now, this happened just before one o'clock. Crews put out a fire at a vacant house on Coral Street near Guadalupe. Because the house was empty, firefighters were able to get inside quickly, of course, putting out the flames before a widespread. Arson investigators were called out to the scene. We're waiting for the results from that investigation. But overall, we're told crews were satisfied with their work in containing that fire from damaging nearby homes. Now, Jonathan, we're going to get back to that other house fire that you mentioned earlier. Take a look at your screen. This is different video. This happened around the same time around the other house fire was happening on the west side. This was happening on the southeast side on Schley Avenue near Rigsby. When crews arrived to the scene, they saw light smoke coming out of the house. Of course, they went inside. They found a small fire right there in the front area. They were able to move swiftly through the home, even up to the attic to make sure there were no hot spots inside. The two people that were inside that home, they were able to get out safely. No word yet on how significant the uh, damage was for that home and if those people people were able to return. But for now, reporting downtown San Antonio, Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alyssa. Also new this morning, San Antonio police investigating a stabbing on the city's southeast side. Let's take a look. This is what we know right now. It happened just before 3.30 this morning. This is the 4600 block of South Hackberry. It's near East South Cross and South Pressa. Uh, police tell us a woman stabbed a man in the arm during an argument. He was taking a Bamsi for treatment. He is expected to be okay. No word yet on what actually led up to the stabbing. We're still waiting to learn what charges, if any, the suspect could be facing. New details this morning on a shooting that happened to early Thursday morning that left a two-year-old in critical condition. Sadly, the child has died. It happened on Kent's Store Street near South Ellison on the west side. The victim, Romel Antonio Richardson, was shot in the head. Police say his parents rushed him to the hospital. Family members told police the gun was laying on top of an ATV when the little boy knocked it down. They say when the gun hit the floor, it fired. Another child was also in the home at the time of the shooting, but was not hurt. No charges have been filed. Law enforcement in Atascosa County finally making an arrest after a four and a half hour manhunt for the suspect who refused to pull over on Highway 281. So DPS and the Atascosa County Sheriff's Office tell us the suspect drove behind a Bill Miller's restaurant into a field, then bottom out on the banks of Bonita Creek. That's when deputies, DPS and officers from Pleasanton Police Department, they started searching for him. They eventually spotted him trying to cross Calgren Road. He was arrested, now facing charges for unauthorized use of motor vehicle and evading arrest. Have you seen this woman? Take a look at your screen. Sheriff deputies in Cameron County down in the valley say 38 year old Shauna Messer was last seen on April 23rd on Padre Island Highway in Brownsville just after 10 p.m. Messer is 5'6 with brown hair, blue eyes. She has tattoos on her neck and both forearms. She was last seen wearing black shorts with a black sports bra. If you see her or know where she is, Call the Cameron County Sheriff's Office at 956-554-6700. Well, Fiesta 2023 is coming to a close, and what a fun ride it has been so far. Today on Leading SA at 8 a.m., 
We're set to have a leader from the Fiesta Commission. He's going to be joining us talking about the changes they've implemented this year, plans for future Fiestas, all the attendances. I want to hear about numbers, whether that's monetary, you know, the economic impact from Fiesta, or just the amount of people we saw at Fiesta Flambeau. And obviously talk about a full recap. If you have any questions you'd like to submit, submit them right now. Now just head to the leading essay section of KSAT.com, then join us later this morning, 8 a.m., for the full conversation. And as we wrap up Fiesta, thousands of people joined on the fun at the 75th Flambeau Parade. KSAT's Lee Waldman was one of those thousands in the crowd as people took in the lights and sounds of the final night of Fiesta. Fiesta 2023 is wrapping up and the crowd here for the Flambeau Parade cannot contain their excitement. For the people here, it's more than just a parade, it's all about family. Viva Fiesta! Viva Fiesta! There you go! So always these seats? Uh-huh. Okay. Yes, ma'am. What's the best part about this parade? The people. The atmosphere. The floats. The food. Viva Fiesta! For Fiesta, what are you looking forward to the most? Um, I'm looking forward to the parade. I've never actually been to a parade before, so I'm very excited to see what San Antonio has to bring, honestly. Part about Fiesta? Uh, the turkey legs, and I want to go get mini taquitos and be here with my grandbabies. I bought them lights and everything. Y'all are, are ready for the parade. Viva Fiesta! Oh, it's okay. Thank you. The best part is the people. Yeah! You know what I mean? We, we've been coming here for years and we just love it. I mean, you could feel the unity in San Antonio. We're family all here. Our beloved Flambeau is celebrating its jubilee this year. 75 years of light, laughter, and love. If you missed the action, don't worry. You can rewatch all of it on KSAT.com. Viva Fiesta! Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Viva Fiesta. And we will, probably won't be saying it until next year, so let's oh, get it out of our system. Of course. I want to give a shout out to <laughs> Andrew Wilson, who the shout during that story oh, yeah. really Gnarly shout, Andrew. Good brought job. some life to it. <laughs> All right, folks, time is 639, 52 degrees, and still ahead before 7, San Antonio FC was back in the Alamo City to defend their home turf during Fiesta. But was it enough to get the win? And after the break, you still have time to early vote before Saturday's, next Saturday's May 6th election, when the polls are open and where you can go to vote. That's next. And taking a look outside through live cam, the sun is making its way out. It's 52 degrees, but Sarah's telling us it's not gonna stay cool for long. Good morning, welcome back. Early voting already underway, and we are now under a week away until next Saturday's May 6th general election. And while you've still got a few days to early vote, some people already took care of it, including San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg. Early voting has been great. Uh, there's been good, strong turnout. Of course, concern is always that there's fiesta going on at the same time, but you know, it seems like people are taking their civic responsibility very seriously this year, which is absolutely great to see. All right, so the mayor up for re-election along with all 10 city council positions and Bear County seats. Currently over a million eligible voters in Bear County for a list of polling locations or look at a sample ballot, just head to KSAT.com. And if you want to vote early, you can do so Monday and Tuesday. Tuesday is the last day of early voting. Polls will be open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. on those days, and you can find a list of polling locations by heading to our website, KSAT.com. Sarah Spive, if anyone wants to head out there, vote early yeah. tomorrow, are they going to be okay to do so? I'd say today, but I don't think there's voting on yeah, Sunday. Yeah, polling is closed today, but you know, tomorrow the humidity is going to be low and, and it is going to be a nice day tomorrow. Humidity returns on Tuesday, though. Okay. So. But a little humidity shouldn't stop you from voting. No. I don't think so. Hey, I mentioned earlier that this month has been a wonderful month for rainfall. Here's a look at how much rain we've seen since April 1st. Almost five inches of rainfall, and that is nearly two and a half inches above average for the month of April. What's that old saying? April showers bring May flowers. It has been a really good month for us. And in fact, you know what? The month of April has helped us get closer to where we should be since the start of the year. 
Since the start of the year, we've seen nearly eight inches of rain, and that is only a rainfall deficit of about half an inch or so. So again, a really good month for us, but we need additional rain. Here's a look at the drought monitor. You can still see that there's exceptional drought across parts of the hill country and out to the west. Extreme drought for San Antonio, even out toward Del Rio, we're experiencing severe and moderate drought. Not so bad across the coastal plain, but let's take a look at a little bit closer to San Antonio. Again, extreme and exceptional drought out there. We could use some more rainfall. Thankfully, we're going to be entering into a more of a neutral. Uh, we're in a more neutral weather pattern than we have been in the last three years when we've been in La Nina. We're neutral with the hopes of getting into El Nino by the winter, and that would be good for us as far as rainfall goes. Now, when we look at the week, it's not until Thursday and Friday that we see an increase in rain chances, about 30% uh, storms on Thursday and Friday. And it is that time of year where whenever we get storms, they could be stronger severe. So we'll keep you posted on that. But first, I want to get you through the day. I mean, it is a chilly morning out there. It's 50 degrees. You'd like to look up to the uh, hill country. It's 43 in Kerrville and 49 in Hondo. It's 46 in Uvalde. Good morning in Carissa Springs, where it's 48, 48 in Eagle Pass this morning, too. So it is chilly, but I'm a little bit worried that people are going to dress for the cold and experience the heat this afternoon because it is going to be a hot day in spite of the cold start where temperatures are in the upper 40s and even near 50 degrees in San Antonio. But all, it's all to do with the dry air. Dry air heats up really quickly and we've got dry air in place. So as soon as we see the sun and I'm seeing the sun on the horizon right now, we are going to be warming up. This is a look at the high temperatures today. Can you believe it? We're going to start off in the 40s and top off in uh, right near 90 degrees in San Antonio, 90 in Castroville, 90 in Port S.A. Kerrville, it's actually going to be closer to 85, not 75. I need to fix that graphic for you. 87 in Canyon Lake, 87 in Bulverde, 92 in Yavaldi. The average high this time here is 83. Yesterday we were cooler than average. Today we're going to be warmer than average. Here's a look at the KSAT 12 hour forecast. Yesterday was dry too, so why didn't we warm up too quickly yesterday? Well, that's because we had that stout north wind. Today, our winds will only be from the southwest at about 5 to 10, so we're going to warm up. By noon, we'll be at 82 and we'll be near 90 this afternoon, right around 4 or 5 o'clock. Now, the humidity will stay pleasantly low through the day tomorrow, but with a high pressure system moving off to the east, by Tuesday, it's going to become humid again around San Antonio. That stubborn summer like humidity that's going to be with us for most of the week and we're going to be looking at that chance for storms again by Thursday Thursday night and Friday temperatures highs will be in the mid 80s but it may even feel hotter on Friday than it does today because again even though it's going to be hot today we'll have that dry heat thank you Sarah you know Dress in layers today. Yeah, I, guess, I think that's a good idea. Right? Absolutely. Light jacket to keep warm and then just take it right off yep. once it starts getting hot. It's going to be nice <laughs> and toasty this afternoon. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 648, 52 degrees. And coming up next, the Parasports community is rallying to help an Afghan refugee living in San Antonio get back on the court. Why they say this cause is bigger than basketball. And let's take a live look out of the roadways. San Antonio, 37 at Hackberry. Not too many people out and about early this morning. It is only 648 on a Sunday morning, the Sunday after Fiesta Flambeau. But if you are out and about, if you do have plans, head to church, make sure to drive safely, be smart. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Sam Adineron. You may know him, you may have seen him. A key cog from last year's USL Championship squad was back in the lineup last night at Toyota Field as SAFC hosted the Vegas Lights FC. San Antonio down 1-0 in the 42nd minute. How about Christian Pirano bending a free kick inside the near post? A spectacular shot is San Antonio's only goal of the match. They once again settle for a 1-1 draw at home. Now, meanwhile, an Afghan refugee living in San Antonio is trying to get back to doing one of the things he loves the most, playing wheelchair basketball. He's a former Paralympic champion and beloved teammate. However, he's been off the court because he doesn't have the proper chair. RJ Marquez tells us how his team is rallying to help him out before they head to nationals. Every day, every night, every second I was thinking how I can get back to 
basketball. You can't miss Mohamed Bilal on the basketball court. The former Paralympic champion moved to San Antonio in late 2021 after bombings in Afghanistan. I think San Antonio's uh, best part to, to start a new life uh, because I want to share my experience. Bilal now helps other refugees find a place to live and work in San Antonio. And one of the ways he's fit into the community was through wheelchair basketball, but unfortunately hasn't played this season. Every day, every night, every second I was thinking how I can get back to basketball. You know the problem is uh, that I don't have my own wheelchair uh, to fit my body. His team, the Parasport Spurs, is getting the word out about helping Bilal get a new chair, which costs around $7,000. It's like a, a custom fit pair of tennis shoes for a pro athlete or for anyone. You know, if the shoes fit very good, you get better performance. If Bilal is able to raise enough money to get that custom made wheelchair, it would take him about 12 to 16 weeks before he's able to get back on the court and play here with his brothers. He left from his country and now he feels like now he's got a part that he was missing back. And we've accepted him in. The Parasport Spurs are headed to Nationals next week. Bilal will have to miss this tournament, but hopes to be back soon. He now has a baby girl to hopefully cheer him on in the future. I have a one-year daughter now. My, my daughter uh, future, my, my wife future, very bright and, uh, and very good. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Now, Max, this is an incredible story. I had a chance to do some empathy training, which puts you in the wheelchair. I have to say it's much harder than it looks. So my respects to all those athletes because it's, it's not easy. So it's really impressive to see them play. I mean, even seeing those highlights, I was like, I can't make that pass. I wouldn't be able to do all of that while doing that oh, at no. one time. I, I can't even play basketball, you know, like regularly. <laughs> just regularly. So it's, it's, it's tough. <laughs> Absolutely. Great story by RJ. Sure. 654, temperature 52 degrees. All right, here's what's coming up next on Good Morning America. Good morning coming up on GMA. Police and the FBI leading an urgent manhunt for the gunman they say is responsible for a deadly mass shooting in Cleveland, Texas. The suspect considered armed and dangerous and what authorities are saying about the victims. We're also following severe weather threats this morning impacting millions A violent outbreak of storms in the south bringing tornadoes, hail and heavy rain and more dangerous flooding on the coasts and Buckingham Palace buzzing releasing new coronation ceremony details as we count down to the historic crowning of Charles and Camilla later this week. It's all ahead here on GMA. Fiesta Gifts Back is powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Fiesta Gives Back through its grand nighttime celebration on the Riverwalk, the Texas Cavaliers River Parade. One night each year, the Riverwalk is lined with thousands of Fiesta goers catching glimpses of festive, decorated riverboats. It's a night of celebration, but it's also a party with a purpose. All money raised through the Texas Cavaliers River Parade supports local children's charities through the Texas Cavaliers Charitable Foundation. The Texas Cavaliers encourage, foster, support, and conduct activities and programs to benefit Texas children. In collaboration with the River Parade and King Antonio, the Texas Cavaliers have raised more than $8 million for children's charities and organizations to date. So head on down and pull up a seat next to the river and experience the magic of the River Parade. You'll have a great time while helping Fiesta give back. Well, it is chilly out there this morning. It's 46 in Bernie and 44 in Bulverde, 50 here in San Antonio and 47 in Hondo, 49 in Divine. I feel like Mother Nature is playing an April Fool's joke on us <laughs> the last day of April because look how hot we're going to be wow. later on today. So even though we're starting off cool, we'll get up to 90 this afternoon, warming up throughout the day under totally sunny skies and low humidity. Tomorrow's going to be very similar. Humidity returns on Tuesday. We'll be monitoring for storms Thursday, Thursday night, and Friday. All right. You know, I have to say... I appreciate it this morning. There's nothing like walking out into a hot, muggy morning. So <laughs> Feels great outside. Cool morning was definitely appreciated. And what's tomorrow going to be? It's going to be May. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. <laughs> Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. All right, we're starting off with a gorgeous live look at the Alamo City. Look at that, only 56 degrees out, not a cloud in the sky. The question is, what is the rest of the day going to look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But until then, good morning. It is 8 o'clock. It is Sunday. It is April 30th. 
Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Jonathan Coto, thank you for starting your morning oh, with it's us. It's my pleasure to be here, filling in for Sarah Acosta. And speaking of the weather, it's been nice. Last night was just so cool and crisp. I stepped outside and I took it all in and I was just so thankful for it, but I'm not sure if that's what's going to hold up for today. We'll check <laughs> in with Sarah right now. Here's the thing though, Jonathan, even though it is going to get toasty this afternoon, the humidity is going to stay pleasantly low today. So it was nice last night for Fiesta Flambeau. Absolutely gorgeous. Even this morning we got down to 50 degrees, but as Max was mentioning, it's already 56 outside right now. In just 30 minutes, we've seen the temperature go up by some six degrees. So we're going to quickly warm during the day today. Unless you're going to be heading out in the next hour or so, you will not need a jacket. We're going to be near 90 degrees this afternoon. 56 outside in Santa Antonio, but it is still 47 in Kerrville, 53 in Hondo, 55 in New Braunfels, zooming in a little bit closer, 52 Bernie, 47 Rio Medina, 49 in Converse. So again, an impressive temperature swing today. By 10, we're going to be at 72. By noon, already in the 80s. And by 4 or 5 p.m., 90 degrees for the forecast high this afternoon. Southwest winds at 5 to 10. Now coming up, we'll talk a little bit about how a big temperature swing like this is possible. And I'll get you ready for the week ahead when we have the best chance to see some storms coming up soon. Max, Jonathan. Thank you, Sarah. We now have the latest in a police investigation regarding a body that investigators found in a local creek. So we're told that the body was found yesterday evening in the 5900 block of West Commerce Street. That's near Monterey Park on the city's west side. SAPD made the discovery after someone called them saying that something was moving fast in flooded waters. Now, San Antonio firefighters recovered what was described as a severely decomposed body of a woman. Now, police still investigating. They tell us they've been able to determine that it was a woman, but still working to figure out who exactly she was. All right. Fiesta is starting to wind down, at least Fiesta 2023. Thousands of people, though, joining in on the fun at the 75th Fiesta Flambeau Parade just last night. That's right. Many took in the lights and the sounds of the final night of Fiesta. Let's hear some of that sound and fun right now. We can take a look at Fiesta Flambeau from last night. If we can get... That is amazing. So I want to give a huge shout out to Sarah Spivey because... She made it out there. I, I was not trying to sacrifice the sleep, and she was out there. She had all the fun. But take a look. Thousands and thousands of people. Jonathan, you said it best. The lights and the sounds. Obviously, you, we usually say sights and sounds, but look at all the lights. I mean, it was... As the kids say nowadays, it was lit. You know, a nighttime parade, yeah, well played, it was <laughs> lit. A nighttime parade is always the best because you really get to just take in all the colors and all the, the just the, the excitement of those floats. And we have to mention, you know, the, the Flambeau Parade, it's, it's in its 75th year, celebrating 75 uh, you know, years of this parade. And we know that it began in 1948. So it's, it's really cool to see that parade still going strong and uh, seeing the best of of the Alamo City. All right, now we've been celebrating Fiesta all week long, highlighting our South Texas history and culture. And as Fiesta starts to wrap up, Alyssa Cole joining us live downtown, introducing us to two local artists using their talent to capture this colorful culture of San Antonio. Good morning, Alyssa. What do you got? Yes, good morning, Jonathan Max. So good to hear you all talk about Fiesta. I can still feel, you know, some of the fun from yesterday, but, you know, it was all worth it. First Fiesta, definitely down in the books. But good morning, you all. I am here outside of the Briscoe Western Arts Museum, where inside there are 300 original Texas handmade art pieces all under one exhibition. Take a look at the video on your screen right now. Every year here at the Briscoe Western Arts Museum, the staff hosts a fundraiser exhibition called Night of Artists, where hundreds of artists sell works of landscapes, portraits, sculptures, and more. We got a chance to talk to two artists. They're both from San Antonio. And get this, they're also married. One influenced the other. One used to be a teacher. It's a really cool backstory. Very wonderful. Now, I'm going to get into the details of their story and the type of artwork that they do and why they do it coming up in our next half hour, the 8th 
830. And what's really cool, too, that's coming up at 830, Max and Jonathan, is that you all will get a chance to see this original 300 piece artwork on display right here at the Briscoe Museum free of charge. So if you didn't get a chance to make it to all the different Fiesta events or you, you didn't get a chance to make it out to the King William Fair yesterday, but you still want to experience some of that South Texas energy, that life that you all were talking about, that culture, you can be a part of Locals Day on, or excuse me, next Sunday. But we'll have more details coming up at the 830 half hour. So stay tuned with us to learn more details. I'll send it back to you all. Melissa Cole, thank you so much. So as we've been talking about, Fiesta 2023 is wrapping up. It has been a whirlwind of celebration, fun, and of course, for me, it's all the phenomenal food. Oh, totally. It's always about the food. But joining us today in, in leading SA segment is Steve, Executive Director of the Fiesta San Antonio Commission. Steve, thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. All right. So we really do appreciate you joining us, you know, the morning after Fiesta Flambeau. So as we do look at the last day of Fiesta, how did everything go from you guys' perspective? You know what? The, the, the feedback has just been tremendous this year for Fiesta. You know, it was back to a normal time frame in April and all the organizations have just had some great successes this week. So it's been a, it's been a lot of fun to share the Fiesta family spirit with uh, more than two and a half million people. So it's been a great week. No, Steve, we know we've, we're, we're coming out of, you know, a really rough, you know, last couple of years. What were some of the major changes implemented this year for Fiesta? Well, one of the changes that we had this year, we actually, um, unfortunately, it, it rained out last Thursday with our Fiesta Fiesta opening ceremony. But uh, we did move that to Travis Park this year. and That was going to do to some of the construction downtown. But, you know, it was just great to see all the Fiesta organizations really come back and experience a full Fiesta you know, we did have a few weather challenges early in the week, but but our organizations, they really gathered together and really uh, made the best out of the situation and really had some great success for their organizations. Well, I know you guys are never resting on your laurels. So are you guys already planning changes for next year or future fiestas? Well, we are. We already are having meetings about next year and we're looking to the future. Uh, obviously, it takes a whole year to plan fiesta. And with our great volunteers and all the great uh, fiesta organizations, we're looking to start making some plans now. Uh, one of the one of the possible plans would be a location for Fiesta Fiesta. Um, if tra if uh, Civic Park is available, the the plan right now is to move into Civic Park downtown and have Fiesta Fiesta. So we'll be working with with Hemisphere and city officials and Fiesta officials. But yes, we're already making plans for next year. Now, Steve, while I was out there, I had the opportunity to meet people from Georgia, from Louisiana, from all across the country. As the population yeah. increases around San Antonio, would the commission ever consider hosting events further away from downtown? Well, you know what? One of the things that I, I personally love about Fiesta, and I think a lot of people do, is that Fiesta events happen in all parts of San Antonio. So south side, west side, east side, north side, and downtown. And that's really what makes Fiesta very special is that all parts of San Antonio are represented during Fiesta. One of the discussions that we've had with our board this year is to look at some of the contiguous counties of to Bear County to see if we need to work with having some Fiesta events that expand outside of Bear County. So we're going to be looking at some of those uh, some of those organizations and some of those ideas as we go. But we really want to, to make sure that uh, that all parts of San Antonio are represented during Fiesta. Of course. Now, now, you and I discussed a little bit about the numbers. There's a lot of them to deal with, and a lot of them are preliminary. But in terms of visitors, economic impact, you know, this is a party with a purpose, money raised. You know, what do those numbers look like so far? Well, you know, we did a, an economic impact study a few years ago, and the results showed $340 million economic impact to San Antonio. So that's, that's, a, great, that's a great boost for the economy for San Antonio. But it doesn't necessarily track the charitable impact that our organizations do, too, which is tremendous. And we'll be getting a lot of those numbers back in the next couple of weeks from our organizations. Really, when we say uh, party with a purpose, our organizations are doing a great job of because of Fiesta, they're able to raise funds to support their organizations that support the citizens of San Antonio throughout the entire year. And that's really why we do Fiesta. And do you guys have a number in mind? Obviously, you know, we've seen the amount of millions raised over the last few years. You know, do you have a specific number in mind that, that you guys have a goal to hit? Well, we try to use those numbers as benchmarks. And once we start to get the attendance figures, 
from all our organizations. Uh, we look to about two and a half million people coming through the the different tickets and the different gates at the event. So our numbers look at about two and a half million people. And if if Flambeau is any indication of the excitement and the the crowds for Fiesta, um, it looks like we're going to hit those numbers again. Steve, well, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure having you. Surely the planning for next year's Fiesta starts bright and early tomorrow morning. <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah, April April 18th to 28th for 2024. And I just want to thank KSAT for all your support for Fiesta. Thank you. All right, folks. Time is 810, temperature 58 degrees. Now, more than two years after his brave battle with cancer, the legacy of Judson High School football player Bryce Wisdom lives on. We'll tell you what's being named in his honor. All right, let's take a quick live look out there. Oh my goodness, gorgeous start to the day, but it is already starting to heat up. Already 58 degrees, how warm will it get on this last Fiesta Sunday? We're gonna check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. It's been more than two years since Judson High School student and football player Bryce Wisdom's brave battle against cancer and his family is continuing his legacy. A family waiting room at the new University Hospital building will soon bear Bryce's name. RJ Marquez met with Bryce's parents and gives us a first look at the room that will inspire others to fight the way Bryce did. <laughs> It's been too long. <laughs> Diana and Richard Wisdom returned to University Hospital to reconnect with the doctor and nurses that care deeply for their son Bryce. What you guys did for our family and for Bryce, I can honestly say he left out of this world happy. Bryce died in June of 2020 and would have been 20 years old on Friday. The Wisdoms are keeping their son's name alive with this new family waiting room under construction at University Hospital. I still feel them. I can feel them in here. Um, the first time I came in was really emotional, but now I'm, I'm, I'm excited. This was the first time that Bryce's father was able to walk through the room that will be dedicated to his son. And we jumped into this world, um, you know, not knowing anything. And then for other families to kind of help us along, it, it kind of eased the path and we want to just do the same. And so to see his name and his legacy live on, it, it's going to be truly amazing. The new hospital is expected to open in early August. Bryce's room will be on the floor where children with cancer receive treatment. This will be a brand new start and give other people hope and encourage the fight like Bryce did. Until then, the Wisdoms will continue to raise money for the Bryce Strong Foundation. They will also use this room as a way to help fund programs benefiting children and young teens at the hospital. So what do you think Bryce would tell you? He'd be so happy. And then, okay, what are we gonna do next? That would be the next thing. What are we gonna do next? And it keeps us smiling because the moments when we get sad, the pain and the anguish that you feel, it's just the opposite of what I feel right now, the joy. This is just amazing. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. That is such an amazing story. And, you know, the entire family is so kind and they've been through so much. And you know, to at least see Bryce's name on something really is so powerful. Definitely. Absolutely. Guys, you know what? The weather is really going to be beautiful today. A little bit on the warm side, though, and you may not believe that from how cool it's been this morning, but it is going to get very toasty. Here's a look at the weather setup for you. Now, it's really interesting because it's the tale of two different types of weather. OK, so you've got beautiful weather on the western part of the United States. And then look at this, the eastern half of the US getting walloped by two storm systems. You can actually see them, the counterclockwise movement of the lows up near Chicago and down near Atlanta. This is where the storminess is for throughout the day today. These two dueling storms going to be moving off to the east, creating havoc for those traveling in the air today. So keep that in mind. Meanwhile, here in San Antonio and across town, Texas, we're going to be dealing with a high pressure system. High means dry. It's moving overhead in the upper levels of the atmosphere, keeping us fairly dry uh, for at least th the start of this upcoming week. Now outside right now, it's 56 degrees at the airport. That's cool. But earlier we were at 50 in San Antonio. In just 30 minutes, we've seen the temperature go from 50 to 56. It is very dry outside. Temperature is still on the cool side, so it's 40 
47 in Kerrville, 53 in Hondo, 56 in Del Rio, 55 in Pleasanton, and 55 in New Braunfels. But if you're not going to leave the home until, let's say, 10 o'clock, you will not need the jacket at all today. And here's the reason why. It is very dry outside. Dew points are in the 30s and 40s. That's toward the bottom of the scale. Now, dry air warms up and cools down quickly. Think about the desert cool mornings, hot afternoons. We've got desert air overhead, so we are going to be looking at a quick, quick warm up here. Here's a look at that KSAT 12 hour forecast. Even in just the next hour, we're already going to be near 70 degrees. 72 at 10, noon will be in the 80s, and in the afternoon, near 90 degrees by about 4 or 5 p.m. It's going to be a pretty pleasant evening, too, with temperatures falling from the 80s into the 70s after sunset. All in all, though, a toasty afternoon. Please, if you're going to be spending out time outdoors enjoying the last day of Fiesta, that you wear the hat, you use the sunblock, all that stuff, because it is going to be sunny, completely sunny and warm, especially west of San Antonio. Look at that. Del Rio 95, Eagle Pass 94 today. It's out west that there is going to be a little bit of an elevated fire danger, too, although winds are not going to be as strong as they were yesterday for us. We'll have southwest winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Going to be 87 in Canyon Lake, 89 in Kerrville, 89 in Pleasanton. Let's take a neighborhood view around San Antonio. 90 in Castroville, 89 uh, down in Poteet, 88 in Seguin and in New Braunfels, 90 in Hondo, 90 in Bandera, and near 90 up in Kerrville and Comfort. So the low humidity is going to stick with us through Monday. Tomorrow, humidity is going to be in the 50s. Dew points are going to be in the 50s, which is still pleasantly low. However, to, by Tuesday, it's going to become humid again, and then by the weekend, oppressively humid. So looking ahead to your forecast tomorrow, very similar to today, a cool morning, a toasty afternoon. But by Tuesday morning, humidity returns. We'll have some morning fog, and then by Thursday, Thursday night and Friday, we are going to have a chance for some storms. It's that time of year where when storms develop, they can become severe. Coming up in the next half hour, we're going to talk about not only that better rain chance on Thursday night into Friday, but also how April has been so good to us for rainfall. We'll talk about that coming up. Glad to hear that. April showers. April showers bring May month. flowers and hopefully more showers. Too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you, Thank you so much, Sarah. Time is 821, temperature 58 degrees. I'll be right back. All right, listen up, all my Mountain Dew drinkers. Mountain Dew is releasing a special soda for the summer, and it's called Summer Freeze. Mountain Dew says it combines bold notes of cherry, lemon, and raspberry with the original Mountain Dew citrus flavor, and it may bring to mind those frozen red, white, and blue bomb pops. Remember oh, those? Yeah. The company claims that it tastes like the best summer of your life. That's summer of 98 for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's available at stores here in the U.S. right now and all through summer. All right, so what do we think? Are you going to get one? Um, no, I'm going to okay. <laughs> But I will try, uh, of course, those red, white, and blue pups. Oh, yeah. Some Summer's right around summer. the corner. Sarah Spivey told us it's going to be 90 and sunny today. Might as well get one today. Get one now. <laughs> all right, folks. Time is 825, temperature 60 degrees. Fiesta Gifts Back is powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. The Fiesta gives back through one of its most popular events, a night in old San Antonio, the giant four-night festival in the heart of downtown, Niosa or Neosa, depending on who you talk to, to celebrate San Antonio's diverse cultural legacy for thousands of Fiesta goers every year. But the celebration more than just cold drinks and chicken on a stick. Niosa is all about preservation. The Fiesta event sponsored by and benefits the Conservation Society of San Antonio. It founded almost a century ago. In 1924, the Conservation Society has made considerable efforts to preserve many of the unique sites and historic attractions of the Alamo City, ensuring San Antonio as a top tourist destination. So grab that turkey leg or have that sausage on a stick and help preserve and maintain your city. You'll have a great time, all while helping Fiesta give back. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Happy last Sunday of Fiesta. I'm Max Massey. 
Good morning, and I'm Jonathan Coto. Max, I think today is going to be the perfect day for some kayaking. We're expecting some really nice and hot temperatures. Let's check in with Sarah. Kayaking, cool, that would be fun. Yeah, it is going to be toasty this afternoon in spite of the fact that we're still in the 50s this morning. Quick warm up for us, but first I wanna get you through your pollen count for the day. This is an improvement from yesterday. Molds are low at 270, pecan and grass are low as well. Good looking pollen count as we wrap up Fiesta and as we wrap up Oak season and as we wrap up April, a lot of wrapping up there. All right, temperatures, 56 in San Antonio, 50 in Kerrville, 56 in Yavaldi and 53 in Hondo. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're enjoying your morning. It's a little on the cool side up in Kerrville. It just got to 50 degrees. This is deceptive, though, because we are quickly going to warm up. We're already in the 60s. At the bottom of your screen there, you can see it's 60 degrees. So we were at 50 this morning for the low. This afternoon, I'm forecasting 90 degrees. That is a 40 degree temperature swing, all because of the dry air in place. And as we end April, April has been very good to us for rain. Coming up, we'll talk about how much rain we've seen, the most rain in a year and a half, in a month, impressive. And we'll take a look at the drought monitor and our rain chances in the week ahead as well. Jonathan. Thank you, Sarah. Now to a manhunt for the man investigators say shot and killed five people execution style inside a home north of Houston. Yeah, this all unfolded in Cleveland. It's about 55 miles north of Houston. The suspect police are saying is known to fire his weapons in his yard. One of those victims killed the youngest, an eight year old boy. ABC's Matt Rivers has the latest. This morning, a massive manhunt in Texas. The FBI taking the lead in an all out search to track down this man, Francisco Oropesa, believed to be armed and dangerous, accused of a brutal massacre just steps from his own home. We consider him armed and dangerous, and we're not going to stop until he, we actually arrest him and put, bring him into custody. But he is out there and he's a threat to the community. Saturday afternoon, tactical teams finding the suspect's cell phone they were tracking abandoned. Oropesa is accused of gunning down five people including an eight year old child inside their Cleveland, Texas home and what officials say may have been over a neighbor dispute. Yesterday I saw I heard some shootings, but I thought it was like normal, like always never thought this was happening. Authorities say it all started Friday night around 1130 PM when neighbors approached the 39 year old asking him to stop firing a weapon from his porch. The neighbors trying to get a baby to sleep. One of the, the victims came out of the house and said, hey, we have a, a small baby that's trying to, to sleep. And the man said, I'll shoot out in my front yard, do what I want to in my own residence. That's when police say Oropesa, who was intoxicated, became agitated, walked over to the house and opened fire. The sheriff saying the victims were all shot from the neck up, quote, almost execution style. I mean, that's so sad. Can't believe it. I mean, I have kids and I can't imagine this happening. Police say there were a total of 10 people inside, all from Honduras. Deputies reporting two of the women found shot were each laying on a child. Those two children survived the massacre. This ABC's Matt Rivers reporting. Back here at home, San Antonio firefighters very busy overnight responding to two separate fires on two separate parts of town. So let's take you to the first one. This one sparked just before 1 a.m. This is a 600 block of Comal. That's between I-10 and Alazan Creek. This is what we know right now. Firefighters on the scene telling us they got there and they found this vacant home in flames. Now crews quickly responded. They extinguished the fire. Luckily, no injuries reported. Arson and fire investigators called to the scene trying to figure out how this all started, though. Now let's go to the second one to tell you about. This is a situation. This is the 1700 block of Schley Avenue. Now firefighters tell us they arrived to find smoke coming from the home. They did find a small fire in the front area of the house. They quickly extinguished it. Luckily, firefighters able to stop that fire before it spread to not only the attic, but also neighboring homes. There were two people in the house at the time of the flames. Luckily, they made it out safely with no injuries. But again, investigators working to figure out how this all started. And new this morning, San Antonio police are investigating a stabbing on the city's southeast side. It happened just before 3.30 this morning on the 4600 block of South Hackberry Street near East South Cross and South Pedesa Street. They say a woman stabbed a man in the arm during an argument and he was taken to Bamsey for treatment. He is expected to be okay, but no word yet on what could have caused the stabbing. We're still waiting to learn what charges, if any, the woman could be facing. 
Now we head on over to the Rio Grande Valley where the West Laco Police Department is searching for 70-year-old Refugio Mireles. He was last seen yesterday around 11.15 in the morning at 1212 South Bridge Avenue in West Laco wearing a black sweater and blue jeans. He has white hair and brown eyes. Police believe Mireles' disappearance poses a credible threat to his health and safety. If you have any information, you are asked to call the West Laco Police Department. The number on your screen, 956-968-8591. Well, law enforcement in Atascosa County finally making an arrest after a four and a half hour manhunt for the suspect who they say refused to pull over on Highway 281. DPS and Atascosa County Sheriff's Office say that the suspect drove behind a Bill Miller's restaurant after the pursuit. He drove into a field. He bottomed out on the banks of the Bonita Creek. That's when deputies, DPS, and officers from Pleasanton Police Department, they start searching for him. They eventually spotted him trying to cross the road. He was arrested, now faces charges for unauthorized use of a motor vehicle and, of course, evading arrest. New details this morning on a shooting that happened early Thursday morning that left a two-year-old in critical condition. Sadly, the child has since died. It happened on Kent Store Street near South Ellison on the west side. The victim, Romel Antonio Richardson, was shot in the head. Police say his parents rushed him to the hospital. Now, family members told police the gun was laying on top of a ATV when the little boy knocked it down. They say when the gun hit the floor, it fired. Another child was also in the home at the time of the shooting, but was not hurt. No charges have been filed. All right, early voting has been going on for a while now on KSAT.com. We have everything you need to know about early voting. We know the polls are closed today, but don't worry. You still have two more days of early voting, tomorrow and Tuesday. Registered voters can vote at any polling location during the early voting period. Again, you have Monday and Tuesday. It ends Tuesday, but then you can vote at any polling site on Election Day, and that is a week from yesterday on May 6th. So we have a list of every polling location for the May 6th election. Polls will be open 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. tomorrow and Tuesday. You can find that full list, everything you need to know, including sample ballots right now. Just head to KSAT.com. So we've been celebrating Fiesta all week long, highlighting our South Texas history and culture. And as Fiesta wraps up today, Alyssa Cole joins us live downtown to tell us more about two local artists using their talent to capture the colorful culture of San Antonio. Good morning, Alyssa. Good morning, Jonathan. That's exactly right. I'm here outside of the Briscoe Western Arts Museum, where inside there are 300 original Texas handmade art pieces, something we mentioned earlier during our show. And I mean, it is absolutely just incredible to see. Take a look at this video every year right here at the Briscoe Western Arts Museum. They host a fundraiser exhibition called Night of Artists, where hundreds of artists sell works of landscapes, portraits, sculptures, and more. We got a chance to talk to two artists. They're both from San Antonio, and as we mentioned earlier, they're married. Caroline and William Carrington have been creating Western art for years. William, who is a former teacher, was inspired by his wife, who's been a professional artist for more than 20 years. Now, what's really neat about these two is that they use nature, folk folklore tales, and just the essence of South Texas as a muse to tell a story. It's not typical Western art. It's not just the cowboys. It's just it's not all you know the Indians and the history. It's also very uh, present. It's happening right now. I feel very contemporary. I feel like I'm living the Western art life that I want want to lead. My inspiration probably is is kind of humor, obviously, and uh, kind of an admiration for wildlife, the Texas wildlife. I always say that the jackrabbit, the poor things, are just constantly getting attacked. You know, land, sea, and air, so to speak. Hawks, eagles, snakes. Makes, everything's trying to get them. So they're, they're, all they do every day is figure out how to stay alive. And you know, Carolyn's work is just colorfully filled with life. And I have to say, Williams, his work is definitely personal and unique. It's almost like he has an empathetic eye for the jackrabbit and use that, you know, as inspiration to create. I thought it was very, very nice. And you know, what's even more nice is that for one day only, the Briscoe Western Arts Museum will allow the public to view the last day of this exhibition 
for free. It's part of their Locals Day initiative to engage the community, and it's this upcoming Sunday, May 7th. So if you didn't get a chance to do a little fiesta this weekend, or maybe you didn't get a chance to do it earlier this week, you can still feel that that spirit and that life of fiesta and that South Texas culture right here at the Briscoe Arts Museum for a free day this month for Locals Day this Sunday, May 7th. But for now, reporting downtown San Antonio, Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. Thank you. Alyssa Cole, thank you so much. Empathetic guy, and she is absolutely right. The Briscoe Museum such, does such a great job at capturing the city's history and the city's energy and color. Really is Definitely, if you haven't been, it's a must go. Absolutely. Time now, just about 841, 62 degrees. And next in a new gardening with KSAT segment, we'll tell you about some simple things you can do to get rid of pests in your garden. And if you gotta do stuff in the garden, I would do it early. We've seen the temperature shoot up a little bit already this morning. We started early 50s and already 63. How warm will it get? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Fiesta Gifts Back is powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Fiesta Gives Back through its grand nighttime celebration on the Riverwalk, the Texas Cavaliers River Parade. One night each year, the Riverwalk is lined with thousands of fiesta goers catching glimpses of festive, decorated riverboats. It's a night of celebration, but it's also a party with a purpose. All money raised through the Texas Cavaliers River Parade supports local children's charities through the Texas Cavaliers Charitable Foundation. The Texas Cavaliers encourage, foster, support, and conduct activities and programs to benefit Texas children. In collaboration with the River Parade and King Antonio, the Texas Cavaliers have raised more than $8 million for children's charities and organizations to date. So head on down and pull up a seat next to the river and experience the magic of the River Parade. You'll have a great time while helping Fiesta give back. Y'all, we have ants. Ant mounds that pop up are most likely going to be fire ant mounds, yeah. Molly Keck is a certified entomologist with the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Center for Bear County. We have over probably close to 100 species of ants in Texas, so not every ant is going to be a fire ant, but most of them are. And she confirms these are fire ants in the KSAC garden. And she says we're not alone. Fire ants tend to pop up all over South Texas after a big rain. And when the moisture gets down into their mound, they're going to push up above so that they don't drown. So after a rain event, that's when you see the mounds show up. Keck says you can identify them with these three things. Fire ants are the only ones that make that above ground pillowy, fluffy mound. They have no single entrance. So when you mess with them, they come out from everywhere. And they're the only ones that sting like they do and are as aggressive as they are. Now that we know that, what is the most environmentally friendly, organic, and a effective way of getting rid of them. Stay away from synthetic pesticides and chemicals because those can hurt our pollinators. So my go to organic pest treatment is usually diatomaceous earth. But Keck says in this instance it won't work. She says because the soil is so moist, the powder will lose its effectiveness. Or you can try boiling water. However, Keck says don't do this if your ant piles are near your plants because that boiling water will destroy your roots. Yep, way too close. Another safe method for pests is dish soap, but Keck says in this instance it won't work because fire ant colonies go several feet deep into the ground. She says our best bet is using an organic bait with spinosad. I found a bag of organic fertilome. Come and get it at a local nursery or you can find it on Amazon. Keck says sprinkle the bait all around the soil, not on the plant, and keep it dry for the day. Their corn grit soaked in soybean oil, which they're attracted to, they take that out of the environment, they carry it into the nest, they feed it to the queens and to their babies. So it's not a quick kill, but it, it is a more surefire way to manage that that colony. Keck says if these were native ants, leave them. Native ants are beneficial and aerate soil. But she says not only do fire ants have a vicious sting, if I left them, they would hurt my pollinators. Fire ants are going to predate upon those monarchs and those other pollinators for sure. So you're killing them if you're not killing your fire ants. Um, and two, hopefully what you're using, you're applying it to the soil. You're not putting it on the plant material because that's not where that ant is mounding. So apply it in the right place using the right thing and, and being smart and not allowing it to drift onto the flowers or onto the leaf material. And that will that will salvage your pollinators. 
Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Hey, you won't find me complaining about the rain, especially after the dry period of time we've had. In fact, this month, though, is the best month for rain we've seen in San Antonio in a year and a half. The last time we saw this much rain in a span of a month was back in October of 2021. I just wrote an article about it on KSAT.com. We've seen almost five inches of rain for this month at the San Antonio International Airport. That's about nearly two and a half inches above average. And here's the thing too. Since January 1st, we've seen almost eight inches of rain, which is nearer to normal. We're still about half an inch in a rainfall deficit, but that is some good news. Now we've got a long way to go. This is a look at the drought monitor. You can still see that exceptional and extreme drought is around San Antonio and especially up into the hill country. But this has improved uh, just within the last week or so. And as we look at rain chances over the next week, we do have a chance on Thursday and Friday, uh, especially for some storminess Thursday night. The thing is, we do have to monitor for severe weather that it is that time of year. We'll keep you posted, refine that forecast, but we're going to have a few dry days here. It is already 64 degrees and I manually put this temperature here uh, rather than having it populate from the airport because the airport thermometer is actually lagging behind. That's how quickly we're warming up. Temperatures started off at 50 degrees. We're at 64 right now. That is a nearly 15 degree jump in just about an hour and a half. Yeah, temperatures here are kind of lagging behind, but it shows you that we're already near 70 in Rock Springs. So we're quickly warming up. Generally, it's in the 60s out there right now. Uh, and the reason why we've been able to warm up so quickly is because we're so dry. Dew points are in the 40s, which is toward the bottom of our scale, even in the 30s in some places. So we've got desert air overhead, which quickly cools down and quickly warms up. This afternoon, we're going to be at 90 in San Antonio, 86 in Holotus, 87 in Bulverde, 88 in New Braunfels, 90 in Hondo, and 90 in Bandera, about 7 degrees warmer than average. Here's your KSAT 12-hour forecast. By noon, we're already going to be in the low 80s. Instead of how windy it was yesterday, we're going to have southwest winds at 5 to 10, so not too bad. 90 degrees at 4 or 5 p.m. That's our high for the day today. And then tonight, once we see the sunset, temperatures will fall into the 70s. Now, we'll stay nice and dry through the day tomorrow as well. It's Tuesday that this high moves off to the east and really brings back the humidity. And the humidity will be here to stay at least through the weekend. So looking ahead again, we're going to see some fog in the morning on Tuesday with the return of that humidity, and it looks like we're going to have a chance for some storms again Thursday, Thursday night and Friday as well. Well, we'll be, we'll be right back with more news after the break. All right, looks good in the pollen count for the day today. Molds are low, pecan and grass are low as well, an improvement there. It is already 67 degrees at the airport. That means a 17 degree temperature jump since sunrise. Wow. We're going to be at 72 at 10, 82 at noon. 90 for the high today. See, I told you it was going to get warm. Southwest <laughs> winds at 5 to 10. Tomorrow, pretty similar to today. Humidity returns on Tuesday. And we'll have a chance for storms Thursday, Thursday night, and Friday as right. well. So, Sarah, well, Jonathan and I, we valued our sleep enough to not go yeah. to, to Fiesta Flambeau. But because you're such an experienced Fiesta goer, what is your favorite part of Fiesta this year for Fiesta 2023? If I'm being honest, it was meeting so many Aww. awesome KSAT viewers, hanging yeah. out with everyone. I loved our medals this yes. year. It was fun. Thank you guys for letting me join the bro show. Of this course. Time. It, was, it was a pleasure having <laughs> you, sir. Hey, viva Fiesta, <laughs> everyone. Viva Fiesta. <laughs>